In every interaction, there are two needs that have to be met as much on purpose as possible, the personal needs and the practical needs. On the personal side, I have a set of skills that I really like to use. Um, Self-esteem, how do they see themselves as far as confidence and competence is concerned? What about empathy? Am I dealing with the emotion of the situation as effectively as possible? Uh, my paralanguage, am I coming across like I need to be? Am I keeping the, 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 the doors of communication open? And, and how about involvement? Uh, am I finding those opportunities to pull their input in? Because I want as much buy-in as possible. If I say it, it's negotiable. If they say it, it's truth. I want involvement. This is what I call the people needs of an interaction. Because look how big this list is compared to this one. And you know, I don't care where I go in the world, the same thing happens. We can fill up this list. When you think of great leaders, they fill up this list three times before they fill up that list. What does that tell you about the importance of the skill sets of dealing with people are compared to getting things done? I think self-esteem is probably one of the greatest needs of any organization. Uh, and it's one of the greatest responsibilities of anybody in leadership. How people see themselves has a direct connection to productivity, tremendous connection to productivity. And it's important as a leader that I have to have a handle on how my people see themselves in their position. Think about the person that, that works with you that makes you go, I wish I had a hundred of you. They're usually the people that they are, are they are the, the, the epitome of confidence in their position. And they're confident in their relationship with you. That's created, by the way. You don't hire for that. You have to build confidence in your position. You create that. Competence is the same way. If I am competent in my position, I have a tendency to take ownership for my position because I know the boundaries of my position. That, too, is created. My job as a leader is to help you see you. So I'm going to do two things. Confident is how you feel about yourself. So I'm going to say things like thank you more. I appreciate more. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because you need to hear me say, this is what I like. Number one is you're going to do it again. And number two, you're going to start to build that confidence in yourself that yes, I do know my job. Yes, I am doing it right. If I want to build competence, I have to be a little bit more specific. I don't want my people feeling really good about themselves, but they have no idea why, because <laughs> that doesn't help me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you specific examples, and that's my only tip. Give me specifics. Don't just say I did great. Tell me what I did, and I'm going to do it again. If I were to say, Lynn, excellent meeting. I don't think we've ever had a better meeting. You gave more than I've ever heard you give before. I thought our brainstorming was super rich because we've never heard from your department that much. Appreciate you really stepping up and giving and representing your company that, that well. What's she going to do at the next meeting? We might not get her to shut up. Paralanguage is understanding that 92% of all your communication comes from everything that surrounds your words. Your facial expressions, your smile or lack of smile, the way you hold yourself, your eyebrows. Some of you guys need to hear this, especially you executives. You come across way too strong. You need to know when to soften it up. Sometimes you turn the corner and we are ducking under the tables. And you haven't, oh, you haven't opened your mouth yet. Have you ever come home from work and this is your face at the end of the day? And on the inside, I feel great, but this could just be traffic. You know, I got on the 403. Hello. How was your day? It was good. <laughs> yeah, got a lot done. It's awesome. <laughs> Cranked out the work. It was fun. <laughs> Ever done that? There are times when I have to lower my voice. There are times when I have to bring my chair around the desk because behind the desk it's too intimidating. There are times when we have to go get a cup of coffee and let's discuss this because I've got to ensure that I'm coming across very open. That's all paralanguage. Being aware of how you're coming across, not just your words, it's a tremendous skill. Empathy is my ability to acknowledge not just what you said, but also you as a person. And it's a very powerful thing, especially when I'm in situations where emotion is high. A gentleman who comes into the store, and he's fit to be tied. He is, he is mad. He's angry. Because his bill was $400. He expected it to be 40 And he wants somebody's head on a platter. 
and he comes in. Have you, man, have you ever had to deal with these people? I mean, he's mad. He's, ah, oh, ah, 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 ah. And naturally, they send out the cutest little assistant manager, little pixie girl, little blonde hair, la, 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 you know, la, la, la. And she comes out, and, and uh, she comes up, and she's talking to him. He's going, and she's doing this. Uh-huh. Yeah. If you would just, okay. No, no. I, no. I would love, sir, if you, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. It, if you would just, she, she, she kept doing that. And he's getting louder and louder and louder to the point where everybody in the store is listening. In fact, we're all doing this. <laughs> and, and I'm saying in my head, I'm going, please don't say it, please don't say it, please don't say it, please don't say it, please don't say it. What's the worst thing you can say in that situation? <laughs> yeah, that's right, and out it came. Sir, you're just going to have to calm down. <laughs> well, what did he do? <laughs> oh, I apologize. Was I getting out of hand? Forgive me. Please forgive me. Is that what he said? No! I'll tell you to calm down! The challenge is, is that when emotion gets high, what starts to happen to logic? It gets pushed right out. And as leaders, you have to understand that, that when people start to get emotional, and I'm not talking about crying either, or those, those, those you know, over-emotional situations. It could just be stress. But when emotion starts to come into play, the logic of the situation has a tendency to go away. And you might have felt this if you've ever, ever been in a situation where you might have come up with several ideas of how to solve something, but they're saying no, 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 no. Even though they made sense, they're not ready to hear it. That's the people skill that comes in. And so I have to address it by going, I know this is frustrating. We were so close to this last one. And you know what? I, and I'm going to empathize as much as I possibly can because I have to deal with that first. I may share my frustration a little bit because I, I, you know, I'm human too. I'm frustrated too, but I'm not going to live there. I know we can hit this and I know we can hit it together. So I have to address that empathy first. It's called validation. I hold up and I say, I see where you're at. Psychologists go to school for years to learn how to do that. But that's what's needed. She was probably trying to solve it. You know? She's trying to solve the problem. Matter of fact, she probably could. She probably could have said, give me that, $400. You know what, that was, I apologize. We're going to wipe this off this time because it was set up. She probably could have erased the whole thing. Was he ready to hear it? How do you show somebody that you're empathetic? By how you listen, by how you pay attention, you know, by leaning forward and going, mm-hmm, I understand. By asking questions like, what else? Even though I don't need to hear the answer, I know that you need to hear that I'm hearing you. Involvement is my approach that I know that the stronger involvement that you have in the solution, the greater the commitment is going to be. You know the smartest thing a leader can say almost every time they walk into a situation? I don't know. I don't know your perspective. What do you need? Because I don't know. By asking questions and having involvement, I know the entire story. Sometimes as a leader, I have a tendency to have all the information because I have your numbers. Got your numbers right here, and I know exactly what you need. Let me bestow my wisdom upon you. I have to pick the times when I go out of my way to say, what do you think? How would you approach that? What are the concerns? Give me your input. And I'm going to ask those things not because I don't have the answer, but because I know if you said it, the answer would be much stronger in how we implement it. Involvement is key. What's going on? Before we go anywhere, I need to know what, what, what's going on. I need to know you're closer to your situation than I am. Self-esteem, paralanguage, empathy, involvement, these are all powerful tools, skill sets to be done on purpose when I get in front of you to address the personal needs of an interaction.